Jack Cha offers a useful classroom opportunity. The affordances of technology offer many chances for knowledge production, assessment of that knowledge, and related dispositions. In this presentation, you will learn more about assessment in digital environments and how students might improve as they prepare and give Pachaka Cha at other digital presentations. In the meantime, some of the worst poetry you may ever hear will try to tell the story of how one teacher came to find the value of multimodal work as a means of promoting student learning and assessing that learning. Apologies to Mr. Moore and to Dr. Seuss. I hope they forgive my transgression, if not right now, then by the end of this session. Twas the night before finals went all through the house. All the creatures were stirring, but no touchscreen, no mouse. Key clicks, buzzes, and email notifications were silent as students rushed with end-of-term frustrations. Down in his classroom, Mr. Grinchley, a teacher by trade, knew every who down in Whoville liked technology a lot, but Mr. Grinchley did not. Grinchley hated technology, the whole digital lot. Now, please don't ask why. No one knows quite the reason. It could be that his head wasn't soldered quite right, or perhaps that his monitor was just not that bright. But I think that the most likely reason of all may have been that his processor was two sizes too small. For whatever reason, staring down from his classroom with a sour, grinchly frown at the warm lighted windows and Max below in the town, he knew every who down in Whoville with technology banned was busy now preparing for finals instead pencils in hand. You see, Mr. Grinchley said, no technology, it's canned. Who's a smartphone or Surface or Kindle made Grinchley just bristle. Learning is work, and it must not be fun. No need to use Google or Dropbox or Prezi. Such nonsense was shallow and led student brains not to run. They would just plop in photos from an internet search, giving no thought to the learning, leaving tools such as paper and pens out in the lurch. As he sat at the back of his favorite pizzeria, his dog waited outside her name with Sophia. Then he got an idea, really an awful idea. Grinchley got a wonderful, awful idea. I know just what to do, Mr. Grinchley laughed in his throat, and he chuckled and clucked. What a great Grinchley trick. I'll make them all take the final using pictures and video, as long as there isn't a shtick. Their work will show not much thinking. Each who and who classrooms will flunk, sink the whole grading boat, there will be little they show about knowledge thunking. Their blogs won't be scholarly, their sentences trite. Then he dusted off his computer running Windows ME. If whose students could do it, then so too could he. He got stuck only once, for a moment or two. Then he pushed in a floppy, booted the processor, and avoided social websites. His directions would focus on outcomes, the rubric just right. Then he tittered and giggled as he typed the directions. He was sure the young Who's would purloin pictures and passages. They would fill up their slides with images and much too much text. No thought would they give to credibility. Slides would encompass random content. Three facts on each topic. In design, he was certain, would be one big impossibility. Some Who's would give way too much attention to text, forgetting that images, video, and more were part of the message. They would put in some clip art, and that would be fluffage. It seemed some Who's would think words on a slide are what teachers wanted. Just so much wreckage, Grinchley planned and plotted, completely undaunted. Animations and font color, what could be sadder? Every who child would flunk, that's for sure, as each one turned out badder. Because the clip art would go flying, the slides would burn in, and sound effects would click, clatter, and bore. Font colors in pink, fluorescent green, and light blue would give even the staunchest of hippies the flu. But what about images, videos, and podcasts? The best part of all, Grinchley thought. Most likely the pictures will be random and sorrowful, and some each production would be awful. And once and for all, the little who's would learn that digital tools lead to junk, because each little who would most certainly flunk. Now Grinchley hunched over his computer, typing madly a rubric. When a student walked in with an iPad, an item Grinchley thought most caustic. What are you doing, Prof Grinchley, he asked. But you know that old Grinchley, so smart and so slick, he thought up a lie and he thought it up quick. Why, I'm writing your final. I'm sure that you'll love it, he said with a grin, and you and your friends will definitely win. Grinchley thought, and he thought, till his thinker quit working. Should words in the pictures work together somehow? 
So he relied on the work of Chu to inform the rubric his students would use. Do words contribute to the meaning of an image or the other way around? Where will the image be placed in relation to the words they found? The next afternoon, the final was given at one. He was certain whose students would not get it done. He thought they wouldn't check the rubric to address proficiency content, coherence of design. Naturally, Grinsley thought that was just fine. The students would fail, and if they didn't like it, well, they could just lump it. Of course, after that, the whole multimodal thing, we'll just dump it. I'll give them their grades, then all the Who's down in Whoville will all cry boo-hoo. The Who kiddos picked up their tablets and iPads. They couldn't believe it. Grinchley must have gone mad. They did not know of Grinchley's dastardly plan, but they had a secret, a sure way to win. Last year, their instructor had been Mrs. Wynn, who taught them to think of their multimodal work, design content, cohesion, and such. Learning was about all of these. They thought as much. And what happened then? Well, the students turned in presentations amazing. And try as he might to lower the scores, each one made the cut. The students had fun, but especially they learned. And how could this be, Grinchley wondered aloud. Should not the Who's be wallowing in sorrow with grades in the basement? Technology banned? Maybe that's not the way. Well, in Whoville, they say. That Grinchley's small processor grew three sizes that day, and the minute his heart didn't feel quite so alone, he zipped to the Apple Store to buy a new phone, with apps in the App Store choosing carefully to avoid buying a clone. Technology beckons and enhances the learning, with feedback and clear expectations who's found themselves yearning. With any presentation, attribution is key. Just type in the URL. Check out the comments, and you will soon see. Each image is licensed or public domain. Many thanks to the Navy for this image in the public domain.